right. Hello, 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 and welcome to this week's episode of I Love This Country. Man, it has been a crazy couple of weeks. I The last episode I had on my good friend Leslie Jordan to talk about his new record, Company's Coming. We just had a big old time talking about the new record and his Opry debut, which was a couple Saturdays ago. And I made the mistake of saying, well, I just hate that I'm not going to get to see you because the next morning I woke up with tickets. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and so I had to fly myself down to Nashville and I was there at the Opry watching my friend make his debut. And I have to say it was um, really an incredible thing to see Leslie play, but not only just see him on that stage, but see him and other openly queer people on the Opry stage and seeing what a great reaction that they got. And um, that that just really kind of warmed my heart. And I was really excited and happy I got to be there. But, um, and then on Friday, I, the first song of my new record came out and that was a lot of fun. So anyway, all I have to say is I took last week off of the podcast. <laughs> if you were wondering where I went, but I am back today and I am so, so excited to have a very special guest with me today. She just put out her sophomore record back in October. She became a mama over the pandemic. And she is what I think is the probably the best country music has to offer right now. And I'm so happy to have her on the show. Please welcome to the show, my friend Cam. Hi, Cam. Hi. Oh my gosh, you are doing it. You are busy. <laughs> Just, you know what? I went from sitting on my ass doing nothing for a whole year, going from zero to about 105 in two weeks. It's been crazy. Yeah. No kidding. I feel you like feel that's the same the, way. Yeah. But I'm grateful that it's a little bit of a, you know, getting back into it. And I'm excited because I have to figure out how to blend childcare and working at this. Yeah. That's figure out. But. That's crazy. So tell me about tell me about Lucy. She's precious, but how is it how is it being a mama and getting back into the swing of things? It's so far I at first I was really bummed that everything got canceled obviously. Um she took one trip with us. We did a late night with Seth in New York and she was 2 months old and we flew up there and it was wild but we made it work and then everything got canceled and I got to spend so much time with her, which is incredible. And a lot of learning each other and learning how to be a mom. And now it's like, okay, let's take all the skills that I have and see how to blend them with my, uh, you know, booking travel for myself and an infant in a lot of situations. So I think it'll be, I think it'll be fun. People have done it before and people will do it after me. So I, there's got to be a way. Oh, I I feel I have every confidence in you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And you're, I just, you're booking shows now. Like uh, you're going to yeah. be out here tonight in Indio um, playing the, um, what is it called? It's the um, uh, the country night at the Rock Yard. Um, anyway, that's I'm it's like, called something and I'm gonna be something. there <laughs> I the no we're starting you're right there's a that first show out in Palm Springs and we have um yeah some country festivals coming up we have like Lollapalooza Outside Lands Austin City Limits like a whole kind of and then some more shows that are coming up too so it's gonna be you know getting back into yeah, real big crowds. Which is so after exciting. I mean, yeah, I get. Um, I'm like living vicariously through you on um, seeing seeing these dates pop up. It's just I'm so stoked to like not only get to play, go out and play my stuff, but just get to come see, um, you know, other people that I love, and which is just so exciting. Yeah. And I heard you talking about the the. Um, the show at Golden Gate Park, the that's the outline. The outline. Yes, yes. I loved what you said about that show because it was, you said that it was basically like this space that you you know used to go to where you felt like people could you know just genuinely be themselves and yes, you know, like it was just like this kind of um, very open and and um, you know kind of space for for people to be who they are and I just I love that yeah 
Yeah, it's that met well because I'm from the San Francisco Bay Area, and obviously, you know, that means hate Ashbury means something, and sort of counterculture in terms of, you know, free people and free thinking. And then there's on Halloween, which because of the pandemic, they rescheduled Outside Lands to be on Halloween this year. And Halloween for a long time was Castro had like a festival, which is like our like gay mecca you know what I mean so like that like had a big um party celebration and like historically that was when people could come out and dress in drag and like there was a tiny bit more I won't say everyone was completely safe but there was a tiny bit more acceptance in this like you know Halloween night and there's just something that's really free about it and um I think it's really special that now we're going to have a Halloween celebration in San Francisco in Golden Gate Park. And it's just like, you know, that I live for that. I live yeah. for us pushing to be as free as we can be. And that's, um, yeah, I feel like it's gonna be a good coming home kind of celebration. So yeah. I'm excited for that. And that's in October. And if you listeners out there wanna go check out her whole schedule and go to campcountry.com and mm -hmm. it's all right there. Um, but let's get on to some of the music. So you put out this brand new record in October. Um, it's called The Other Side. And I'm gonna start there because I heard this song and I go, well, shit, I could have written this about 15 different people I know. <laughs> <laughs> right? I wanna know where the inspiration for this song came from. Yeah, well, I sat down initially with Avicii, Tim, and then Hillary Lindsay and Tyler Johnson, who writes a lot of my stuff, pretty much all my stuff with me. So we went in and we were writing the song for Avicii to have on his record. So we were kind of, he came in and he sat down and he was playing this melody over and over again. He was a, a huge stickler for like, how the phonetics were and it was it was really intense to be honest like it wasn't that friendly like oh it was like a no we got to get it exactly how I want it which was kind of intense and so I we ended that, up though I yes love, when when someone it's whether that it, you know you're you're writing and people are there's that person in the room that is like very particular about mm -hmm. the, the words and I'm like for a songwriter that seems important <laughs> yeah <laughs> no, it's so true. And some people, you know, everyone wants to be friends at the end, but you know, how much do you push each other? And he was pushing and I, I took a cigarette break with Hillary and I don't smoke because I was like, we got to get out of this room for a second. <laughs> and we were outside talking about it and she kind of had, I think maybe he had the other side, but she added some lyrics and I added, we came up with like a little chorus thing. We came back in and he goes, that's perfect. Except this one vowel. And then he changed that bot and it was like this the start of this long session and we ended it that night exhausted and kind of frustrated but the song was perfect and um yeah i mean i definitely there's there's definitely some people that i won't name names but there's there's somebody that pops into my head as i sing it every time but oh it, when when tim didn't use it for his for his releases i was like oh my gosh can i have this for mine and started working on it and unfortunately, we lost him before um, yeah. he could hear the final stuff, which was another, oh, so a sad. lot of, yeah, it's, um, and I just heard actually, um, Simon, who plays with me, is Swedish, and he said they've just renamed their biggest venue in honor of Avicii, and there's oh, a lot of mental great. health um, programs the family's been donating to to try and help, which is, I'm so happy for, and he, was such a genius and such a great creative brain, you know, who was so unafraid to be going for what he was going for. So I was, um, there's a lot of pressure to make sure I got it right, you know? Yeah. So I spent well, a lot of time. <laughs> I think you did. And we're going to let everyone take a little listen. This is the title track of her new record, The Other Side. Take a little break, come back yeah. in. And we're back. Um, thank you for tuning in today. My guest is Cam. We are listening to her new music. We are shooting the shit just about a bunch of different things. Um, we met a few, uh, it's been a few years ago now at a benefit show in Nashville that I was mm -hmm. hosting. Cam was nice enough to come sing a couple songs. Um, and, uh, I just fell in love with her that night. And, um, we, 
kind of has stayed in touch. I got to see her play stage coach before the world shut down. It was one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen was your blonde hair glowing in the sunset. <laughs> I was pregnant that show too. No oh one knew. God. I just remember like squeezing my buddy next to me and I was like, D it just doesn't get any better than this. Like, look at her, oh. this is so great. Um, but it, it inspired me because I was writing my, my new record at the time. Um, and uh, I had just written the title track for that. And coming back from Indio and seeing you at Stagecoach, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna bother her and see if she wants to sing on this thing with me. And uh, I tell people that I sent you the like work tape of this track. And I'm like, yeah, she just sent a bunch of crying emojis back. And I was like, I'm gonna take that as a yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I mean, that's anything that hits the sadness for me. And I mean, it's just such a, the message of that song, like it sounds, it's something we all kind of know, but I mean, just to have it sung, I think it helps people sit with it a little bit more like what it means to keep doing this over and over and it's yeah it's a beautiful song you did such a good job thanks for letting me be a part of it oh my god it was I was so happy you you decided to jump in and yeah I say I sang it for the first time um basically in a while at the show this past weekend and to see people's reaction especially queer people um you know I oh. think that you know I, and I say this a lot, but you know, country music at its core is this like storytelling thing. But for queer people, we just like never got to tell ours or we were never mm -hmm. in that space. And so to have, you know, I felt like this song was like kind of one of those stepping stones to be like, this, this is something that happens to people, you know, like, but obviously more than queer people can relate to it, but it was my story. And I was so, you know, happy with the way it turned out and, and really, um, thankful that you decided to sing on it. And it's just kismet that a year later, you are, we're here together. I, I know. <laughs> but I want to, um, I want to give people a chance to listen to, uh, this thing that we made together. Um, yeah. and that I am so proud of, uh, this is, um, my song hurt people featuring the beautiful cam. Take a break. I want to play two more songs. I, I, I want to do, um, Till There's Nothing Left, and then Girl Like Me. Um, All right. Around those. Oh my God, I'll just save it. Okay, we're jumping back in. Um, thank you for indulging me. That was a, that was a point of personal privilege. <laughs> 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 um, but that was uh, the title track of my last EP that came out last year um, featuring Cam called Hurt People. Um, she is my guest today. I'm so thankful to have her here. Um, we're gonna play some more of your music. Uh, Till There's Nothing Left. This song was the first song that came off the record. Um, you know, obviously I think that um, I was drawn to it because you had gay cowboys in your video. And I just love that. I mean, it doesn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, the song in and of itself has this like, kind of like 80s vibe to it. The, yeah. the production of it. And I, I'm into that. I like love that. Um, in fact, that, that's kind of like a, a, a theme for my current project. Um, so I was like so, so into that when it came out. Um, but yeah, tell me about the song. Where did this one come from? Yeah, I was writing with actually Hillary, Lindsay and Tyler again. And we had a songwriting session and nothing really came of it, which I feel like people don't talk about. All, there's so many times you get together and just absolutely nothing cool happens. And at the end of the night, I was like, okay, I'm going to go back to the hotel or wherever I was staying. And they sent me a voice memo later, like they'd been drinking wine and just kind of like messing around. Like Hillary was like messing around on the drums and la, 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 dum, dum, you know, like doing that. And it was like, oh my gosh, here's the vibe. Like this is, once you have a little nugget like that, you know, you can build a whole song around it. So Next day went in, Jeff Basker was in with us as well, who's, you know, Kanye, Beyonce, all the fancy people. So we all sit in there and just like build it around this like sexy, steamy, you know, like I'm going to give everything to you, my whole heart, my body, like just, you know, the like last night before everyone leaves for, you know, everyone graduates or whatever. And you just like, everyone's in the backseat of cars being like, ah, <laughs> it's just so much like, tension but in the best kind of way and 
yeah, went into making the, um, the music video. And for some reason, you know, when it like, it's either the end of the world or it rains or something where like the environment saying all the social norms are off. So like, just do what you want to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so this one was like, it's the end of the world. There's no, like, we're in a bar. What do you feel like doing? Like, just be yourself. Own it. You're like, you're riding the bull. You're, do you think these two cowboys are about to like get in a fight and they just make out? And it was just like, <laughs> it was just so, I don't know. It was hot. They were both, by the way, incredible actors. Like, I remember ac- asking them like, you know, would you guys, how do you guys feel about this? It wasn't like scripted to necessarily go this way, but we were like, this would be cool. Would you be into this? And the two of them, that look, the like smoldering. It's so woo! good. It's so, so good. And, and so uh, unexpected. I just like, yeah. I mean, I just wasn't ready for it. Um, <laughs> I mean, I feel like people expect that stuff from me. I don't think they were ready. I know. I know. I'm stepping on the game here, but it was hot. So it was cool. And it was, yeah, it was just so fun. And I remember being a little nervous when I went to put it out thinking, it's a little on the steamy side, you know, and how, how are people going to respond to that, you know, in a more traditional genre. And my grandma came into my head, who was the one who gave me the sex talk. And she told me when I was like 12, she said, Cameron Marvel, sex is like a milkshake. Once you have it, you're always going to want it. And like (laughs) that, it stuck with me like she was raised on a farm baptist like middle of nowhere and she was just so like whole I don't know how to say it but grounded and like it wasn't like overly emphasizing things that were sexual but she's like this I mean that's just part of it yeah you know don't be ridiculous don't be a prude (laughs) she just calls it like it is. She doesn't make it yeah. big. It's just something, yeah. it's just a thing. Well, we're gonna let the listeners uh, have a listen. Uh, I love yeah. this song. This is Till There's Nothing Left. And we're back. My guest is Cam. Um, we got one more song for you um, and I am so excited to talk to her about it. Um, this is the last song on your record and I love the whole record, but this song, I, I, it got me several times. I could have guessed. I could have guessed that this got was me, your favorite. Yeah, it got me several times. Um, I mean, I think, well, you know, the lines that got me were, you know, that the beginning of the second verse, you know, take it from a girl who takes things that take the pain away. And I was like, oh, shit. I mean, and also we were going through a pandemic. So I think, um, you know, my um, alcohol intake was high. <laughs> Yes, yes. I mean, but it was, I mean, I, prior to that, that, that line would have spoken to me. Um, and then, you know, the, the song closing with, um, uh, some people learn to live with a heart that's broke. Um, but that's not what we're here for. Take it from a girl that knows. And I just, where did this song come from? I love this song. Oh, uh, okay. So we sat down here as Natalie Hemby and I, and Natalie Hemby's, you know, of rainbow fame, you know, like oh, she's written so many wonderful songs. And she, um, she sat down here and first we were chatting because I was writing an email to my label because R. Kelly was my label mate and the documentary had just come out. And so I was like, <sighs> I'm one of those people who always writes, if you wonder who writes the emails, it is me. I'm the <laughs> you're hearing from your neighborhood cam again. Like this isn't cool. What do you think? And um, so she was being a, a sweetheart, helping me, you know, just like put my thoughts together besides berating people. And afterwards we were kind of sitting into this song and she goes, I have something for you. And she played the beginning of it. And I was like, oh my God, that's so sad. She goes, it's you. And I was like, oh, it's me. And I, we were trying to figure out what the beginning of the chorus was going to be. And I was like, they're going to give up on you. You're going to give up on them. Just felt so, so much what I wanted to say. Because I think people, you always think of a story arc as there's problems and then there's a resolution and it just works out if you just try hard enough and, you know, all those kinds of things. And yeah. 
um, the last five years in music business and waking up as a white person to what white supremacy is all about and how it operates. I mean, just so many pieces of what I thought were my identity and how the world worked um, were just broke, 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 yeah. broke, you know, <laughs> and that it just was like, which this is, I think, from what I understand from a lot of my queer friends, like an experience that like, it's not quite betrayal, but it's just such a letdown to be, to have people in the world not be what you think they're going to be and not show up the way you think they're going to show up. And I remember thinking like, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. And that was like this you have to really have a moment with yourself. And I'm sure you had to have this with yourself with country music too. Like, okay, if I see it for what it is now, am I gonna, how do I pick myself back up and keep moving forward? Cause do I just let it be a broken thing and be angry and jaded? Or can I find myself in this and still walk amongst the chaos, you know, and let it be a mixed bag and let, and let myself be a mixed bag and just, how you know how do you own all that and so this is all those lines and they're pretty much related to me trying to figure all that out and um yeah it's very very sad very personal it felt like a good way to end a record about transformation and being on the other side and just like I think just normalizing that people are gonna let you down like people you love yeah and this, I don't have to say this to you people you care about and that you think care about you they're gonna let you down in a real serious way and then what your yeah. life still has to keep going forward at that yeah. point. So and I what? think that was, that was something that like, I know, you know, and I've experienced, but it's really that second line in the chorus that, you know, if it's somebody you really love, you're going to find a way to love them again. And I, I it was that thing that kind of like got me. Cause I, I would, I have had, you know, all of these experiences where, yeah, I mean, you know, people didn't, um, show up the way that I wanted them to. Um, but I kind of like held ownership of that in a way where it was mm -hmm. like, um, like it was my, it was still my fault in some sort of way. Um, <sighs> and just hearing that line where it was like, you know what, I gotta, I gotta take those steps forward. And if they, if they catch up to me one day down the road, great, like welcome. But if they don't, at least I'm running forward, you know? So it's just yeah. really, really felt that. And I just think it's such a beautiful song. Um, we're gonna play it for everyone now. This is the last song on her gorgeous record. This is Girl Like Me. And we're back. My guest today is Cam. Um, we've spent the last little bit just listening to all my favorites from her new record. And um, I'm just, uh, I hope you like it as much as I do. I, I just fell in love with this record and I'm just so grateful that you decided to take some time, and come on the show. Um, and, of course, uh, you yeah. are, there's, <laughs> there's good eggs out here. I think that's, that's something that's such a redeeming quality. Whenever I wanna sometimes get frustrated and wanna throw the whole business in the trash, then it's like, you know what? There are good people. Brandon's out here. He's doing it. I can do it. I can do it. So, yeah. yep, we're doing it. Um, I'm, uh, you know, feel like I'm pulling the car up the hill with my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm doing it. Oh my gosh! Well, thank you again so much for um, for coming on the show. Um, you guys go check out her record. Um, it's called The Other Side. It's incredible. And make sure you find her. If she's going to be around you, go check out camcountry.com for tour dates. Um, she's also got some pretty fun merch there. So go check that out too and buy stuff because that's yeah. how we survive. Yeah. Um, and uh, I thank you again for coming on the show. This is I Love This Country. I'm Brandon Stansel. We will see you next week. And we're done. Yay. Good job. <laughs> thank you so much.